NVIDIA up by about 1.5% pre-market. Two firms raising their price targets yesterday on demand for the Blackwell AI chip. Joining us now is another analyst who is also bullish on the stock, Vivek Arya, Bank of America Securities Senior Semiconductors Analyst. Vivek, great to have you with us. Good morning, um, I, was, I was reading your note from uh, just a couple weeks ago or last week. <laughs> it could be. Um, it's saying that NVIDIA is relatively under-owned, which I thought was really surprising. The assumption is that you know, the MAG7, particularly NVIDIA, is probably the most owned trade on Wall Street. What have you found? Sure, thanks, Melissa. I think the, the first thing to realize is that uh, we just went through uh, what is probably just phase one of a uh, large language model uh, deployment. Now we are going to start uh, phase two. Uh, that's when we will see a lot more optimized models, both getting larger in scope uh, to increase their accuracy but then also getting a lot smaller and optimized, and that requires a very flexible set of hardware, software, uh, silicon, and uh, that is, I think, the ecosystem NVIDIA is uh, pioneered and created, and they are just at the start of uh, their Gen 2 product, uh, Blackwell, uh, which will really start to uh, kickstart this phase two of AI. So I think that's very important to realize that even though the numbers have gotten very big, we are still at the start of uh, this deployment phase. When it comes to ownership, uh, what our strategy team uh, led by Savita have uh, found out is that if you take a snapshot of uh, active uh, long-only fund managers across the US, that uh, yes, a lot of them own NVIDIA, but the weightage with which they own NVIDIA stock relative to its weight in the S&P 500 is essentially just market weight, um, right? So even though it is one of the fastest growing stocks in, in our uh, coverage and across uh, technology, it's not actually uh, among the largest holdings in a number of uh, actively managed funds. So we do think there is scope for both a better earnings upside and of course, a lot more uh, weighting in investor portfolios. What do you, how do you see NVIDIA trading for the remainder of the year in, in that in the first half of the year, it was all about this massive CapEx spending <coughs> raise by the hyperscalers. That was a huge um, you know, boost to the AI trade in NVIDIA in particular. And then you had Jensen Huang in the last earnings, uh, you know, raising Q2 guidance on the old chip, but also say that there's going to be plenty of Blackwell revenue for the rest of the year. So they seem to be raising their own bar. Um, what else do you want to hear in order to sort of keep this story going? Sure. So today, <laughs> you know, the most reliable spender on the planet is the U.S. cloud customer, right? They are in a race to deploy these large language uh, models. They have just gotten started. And it's interesting that if you double click on that, uh, the most um, uh, useful models that are out there, one has been developed by a startup, um, right, OpenAI, and the other has been developed by a company, Meta, uh, which is not even a cloud uh, service provider. So that's why I think it's, it's um, uh, you know, uh, interesting to see when people try and predict the peak of this uh, cycle, when some of the largest technology companies on the planet don't even have a large language model that is rolled out and is being adopted in uh, full scale. So that's uh, point number one. I think point number two is that uh, the demand which started from the cloud providers, I think will slowly start to expand into enterprises. There are a number of enterprises across a number of verticals, uh, whether it's healthcare, whether it's financial services, uh, transportation, retail, they also want to extract insights uh, from all the data that they have. And a lot of times they want to do it on premise. And number three, look at the demand that is just starting from all the sovereign uh, countries, right? Each one who wants to have their own a set of large language models that are optimized for their own language, their own uh, culture. So because of the diversity of demand is why we think the diversity of needs across NVIDIA's uh, product stack, whether it's Ampere, whether it's Hopper, and now it's uh, Blackwell. Uh, so that I think is the key, that the demand is a lot more uh, diverse uh, and uh, that is why you need a diversity on the product stack to address it. Jensen, um, speaking of partnership, we built together Biohive 2. Uh, our team was sleeping on the floor of the data center to get this thing stood up in three weeks and your team was too. So kudos. Where to I stopped listening was, I, I was like, huh? Our teams were sleeping. <laughs> They were working hard. My internal, my internal knee jerk reaction went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no sleep. Um, we stood that thing up in three weeks. Uh -huh. um, and it is now the fastest supercomputer in biopharma. Is it surprising to you that the fastest supercomputer in biopharma is being built and operated by little recursion and not one of the massive biopharmaceutical companies? Is it actually in here? 
is in Dick's sport. No, no, no. The, <laughs> the supercomputer, we thought about hanging it from the ceiling, but ultimately we, we had to move it to a data center down south a few miles away. When I walked in, I was thinking, now it makes sense. This is where our supercomputer is. <laughs> Uh, NVIDIA was the first chip company to build supercomputers for our own use. Turned out to have been a good decision. Uh, Tesla is the first car company to build supercomputers. Not a bad call. Lots of other examples. Uh, the, simple, the simple idea is, is whether you believe, whether we believe, you know, whether a company believes that, that in order to discover knowledge out of something where principled simulations will simply not get us there. You know, remember, there was, there was a time when we thought molecular dynamics with enough supercomputers, we're going to simulate the human body. We kind of gave up on that idea. We have a better idea. Isn't that right? And so there was a time where we thought, um, surely there was a time when I thought that we're going to have supercomputers large enough to be able to do weather simulation to the minute to every region in the world within, you know, a kilometer or a few hundred feet. It's now very clear that that's not going to happen. That even with NVIDIA's accelerated computing systems, it'll still require something a billion times larger. And a billion times larger is still a few decades away. And I like to see it in our lifetime. And so the way we solve that problem, uh, and, and just to give you an example, uh, in our world of computer graphics, we, we do this thing called ray tracing. And we thought ray tracing was still going to be three decades away. Three decades away. Today we path trace, which is more advanced than ray tracing, everything. And the way we solved that problem, and the performance is incredibly good, and the way we solved that problem was we simulate one pixel and we use AI to guess the other 64. Okay, and, and uh, we're doing the same thing with, with climate. You know, we understand the physics. You don't have to go brute force simulate the physics right. for every single protein and every single cell. And so we, it's very clear we don't have to, we don't have to simulate the physics. We understand the physics of, of weather. We don't have to go simulate the physics for every square kilometer. And so we could teach an AI how to predict physics and let the AI go and you know, tell us what's gonna happen. Not because we wanna, we wanna understand the causality of weather, we understand causality of weather. We just wanna know what the weather's gonna be like this afternoon, that's all. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a fundamental difference. That's a giant mental leap. That's a, you know, we don't, we understand the causality of things. We want to understand how it's gonna impact, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a person or some disease or whatever. How do we how do we cure cer certain disease? We we probably understand the basic biology behind it. Of course, the complexity of multi omics makes it hard. We understand biology. It's just that in the larger scale of 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 things, it is so hard to understand its interrelationships. We now need to use some other type of algorithm to go understand it, which is AI. And so I, I think that, that um, uh, if you believe in these things, th these principles, then you've got to, and, and then the second thing is if you believe that your company is fundamentally about intelligence, that your company isn't producing drugs, you're producing intelligence that leads to the production of drugs. And if this is how intelligence will be amplified, intelligence will be, will be, will be discovered, intelligence will be amplified, and put to use, then how is it possible that you don't have the instrument of intelligence? And so, so when you think through it through first principles, um, the people who who um, uh, who are able to think like that are able to make that next leap. If this if these if this is to be true, even though nobody's ever done it before, if this is to be true, and you fundamentally believe in something, and even though nobody's ever done it before, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. This is exactly the reason why you should do it. And so that we reason, we reason about things, you know, in this way, and and I think I, you know, I I, I know that most most uh, pioneers and leaders, uh, innovators think in this way, uh, and and you guys think in this way. I think it's really terrific. Did it feel yeah. inevitable at, at the time to you, to everybody else, that progression, or did it not? 
Most people at the time would tell you that that um, uh, that it will never work, and the reason for that is because because um, uh, the corner conditions, all the long tail of problems, and all the pain and suffering that they endured in the laboratories, um, and all of the all of the chips that came back completely non-functional, their life experience caused them to not believe it's possible. And, and I, think, I think the journey of almost every industry is kind of the same, that, that the early people who made that industry suffered so greatly and things worked so poorly that by the time that it, it, it was ready to work well, they don't believe it. It can't, it can't possibly be that easy. Now, there's nothing easy about it, of course. Um, it's just that, it's just that the, the learnings were um, codified into tools. And in our case, and this is the part that's, that's hard for you, and the reason why it's taken so long. In our case, we can change our, you know, if you will, our, our transistors are, you know, our, um, our, you know the, the minimum unit of our biology, okay? And we could change the structure of the transistor until it, we could design with it. You can't. You know, your transistors you have to live with. They are what they are. Our transistors, we shape them until uh, they behave the way that we expect. Um, or that they fit within the distribution of the capabilities of our simulation capabilities. And so if we can't, if we can't predict how a transistor or a chip behaves in these corner conditions, well, don't, don't go there. That was the easy thing. We just shape, we shift. The, our design rules, that's why we have these things called design rules. You don't have design rules, unfortunately. Life, life is the rules, you know, and, and evolution is the rule that you live with. Our, we have the opportunity to shape our transistors and our chips to the point where it turns out our transistors are so small now, they're st statistically different. And if, if one transistor is pointing this way, another transistor is pointing this way, they behave slightly differently. Well, the answer is very simple. Make them all point the same way. And so we, we cause our chip designs to, to do things so that they behave according to things that we understand until we could push the limits further. And so otherwise, we have these things called design rules and methodologies, and, and then everything kind of fits within it. Your, your challenge is much harder because you have to learn uh, the behavior. You have to learn, learn the, the meaning, the, the behavior, the properties of um, these biologics just the way they are. And, well, the, the, the good news is finally you have the technology necessary to do that. That's right. I think, I think we, you know, within our grasp, it surely feels that um, between the, the, the robotics laboratories that you're creating for data process, data collection, systematic data collection, um, and uh, machine learning, and the supercomputers that we build together, uh, you might be you might be within a click or two away from from uh, really really being able to understand the meaning of life. That's a, that's a tall order, but we're working on it. Yeah, you are one of the few companies that gets to work across every industry, basically. Yeah. Um, when you look at your stance in healthcare, I've heard there's sort of three rules. You ask whether a problem is hard. You ask whether Nvidia can make a unique contribution, and you ask whether that will be impactful. I think it's it's easy to imagine that life sciences, healthcare is hard. It's easy to imagine it's impactful. What is the unique contribution that NVIDIA can make in the context of healthcare? What is your stance on healthcare broadly, beyond recursion, just zooming out? Yeah. Well, the, the three things that I said, um, just you know, to, to flip it on its, on its side, the, the alternative is uh, go do something better that somebody else has already done. Um, pursue a path that leads to the fastest ROI, and so these are these are um, these are the the characteristics of people who love to win and make a lot of money fast. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But but that's not us. You know, our our personality is to go do something nobody's ever done before. Do something that if we didn't do it, nobody's going to do it. And and um, and and three, uh, if you choose well, not only will you enjoy the journey, you could make a real contribution, and you might be able to live a life of purpose. And so that's kind of in our DNA. 
that describes describes what NVIDIA is, that describes the way I talk to the company, the, the challenges we, we select, um, the way we approach uh, opportunities and threats and op, you know, challenges and things like that. And so, so I, I think that that's in our DNA. Now, um, where uh, the, the problem, of course, of understanding the language of life and um, to be able to, to, to uh, uh, do drug discovery in silico, uh, if, if there isn't, if, there, if that's not a hard challenge, I'm not sure what is. I mean, that's an insanely hard problem. Um, however, uh, it's, within, it's within our lifetime to do something about it. And, and as you know, earlier we were saying that there are three ingredients. There's the ingredient of the algorithm, there's the ingredient of computing, and there's methodology, which in a large scale is kind of domain expertise. Notice we, we could contribute to two of those three things in a pretty profound way, you know, in a really deep way. And, and because we don't have that domain expertise and we don't desire to have that domain expertise, we could be a great partner to somebody. We want to help every, we want to help every car in the future to be as autonomous as possible so that it can be as safe as possible. But we don't want to be a car company. We would like, we would like um, AI to advance as safely and as quickly as possible, as, capa as capable as possible. But we really don't want to host and provide a large language model service. And so, so notice in many domains, of, in many domains and in many industries, as you, as you called it, um, we don't want to be the, the industry leader. We want to enable the industry to have leaders. And to, so that we could, we could focus on our unique contribution. And, and so, so I think that we could play a real, really great role at that intersection in the three, in the three, you know, the three pillars that we mentioned. Uh, and you have such deep domain expertise. Uh, you have such passion for the methodology. And um, uh, you have a pioneering spirit. You know, you wanna be, you wanna go make this happen. And so, you know, I love people like that. I love, I love, F, I like love endeavors like that, and um, I love you guys because of it. I think it's great.